Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today's case is a STEMI disaster. Uh, a stent delivery balloon malfunctioned uh, in the proximal LED, uh, causing stent loss and a long proximal LED dissection. The LED then completely shut down uh, with a hemodynamic collapse. So the patient is a 60-year-old man uh, who called 911 uh, complaining of severe chest pain. When EMS got there, uh, the ECG showed anterior ST elevations. His chest pain was actually already improving and it was pretty much gone uh, by the time he got to the ED. Uh, we took him up to the cath lab and his cath showed a, a CTO of the proximal RCA, uh, mild disease in the circumflex, and um, you can see the culprit here in the proximal LED. Um, the LED had already recanalized, uh, which uh, explained uh, his uh, resolved chest pain. Uh, this was going to be a piece of cake. So our guide was a six French EBU 3.5. Uh, I wired the LED with a BMW wire and dilated the lesion with a 25 by 20 uh, compliant balloon. And so uh, this is what we had after uh, pre-dilation. Um, I next uh, pass a 3.5 by 30 uh, DES uh, intending uh, to uh, deploy it in the proximal LED. And what happened next is a blur. And unfortunately, uh, we don't have the cine images. The uh, stent delivery balloon uh, ruptured at around six atmospheres. I looked at the tech. Uh, this was really odd, I thought. Uh, the LED did not look particularly calcified. This left the stent only partially deployed uh, like a dog bone. Uh, the proximal and distal edges of the stent were expanded, but the middle of the stent was not expanded. So I actually didn't think that this was a big problem. Uh, the stent was still on the wire, so I just needed to pull out the ruptured balloon and pass another balloon to complete uh, the stent deployment. But when I pulled on the balloon, uh, it was stuck to the stent. It, it wouldn't move. So I pulled harder uh, and the balloon uh, did move, but it dragged the dog bone stent along with it. Uh, the expanded ends of the stent was essentially scraping uh, the inside of the LED as I pulled. The dog bone stent finally stopped when it hit the guide and I was able to pull the balloon out. The problem now is that the stent was three quarters of the way out into the aorta uh, with just a little bit left in the left main. I tried to use a guide liner to push the stent forward a little bit deeper into the left main so that I could deploy it, but the stent uh, would not move and the guide liner just seemed to compress the stent more. All right, so what do I do now? Uh, essentially, uh, we now have a case of stent loss with a deformed free-floating stent mostly out in the aorta. Um, all this in a STEMI patient. So my options were rather limited. Uh, going by the algorithm, I can't really deploy the stent where it was, and I certainly couldn't leave it alone. My only option uh, was to uh, retrieve the stent. So I passed a 2O by 12 millimeter uh, balloon through the stent, and fortunately, this passed uh, relatively easily. I inflated a balloon at the distal edge of the stent, essentially trapping it on the wire between the balloon and the guide. The stent, the balloon, the guide, and the wire then all came out as a unit. Uh, you see here a picture of the mangled stent on the coronary wire in the femoral artery, and we were eventually able to recover the stent. So this is what the LED looks like now. Uh, there is a long dissection in the proximal LED, uh, probably going all the way back uh, to the ostium. So the patient remained uh, remarkably stable. Uh, he still had minimal chest pain and he did not have ST elevations. Uh, so what to do? Well, option one would be to, to rewire uh, through the dissection and try PCI again. But remember this patient has an RCA CTO. So wiring through a dissection is actually extremely high risk. If the LED shuts down, then we're toast. Um, I was also worried about the second stent malfunctioning as well. I wasn't really quite sure what caused that first stent of the balloon to rupture in the first place. So option two would be cabbage. Um, I um, talked it over with cardiac surgery and we decided that the best thing to do was to put in a balloon pump and transfer him um, for, for urgent cabbage. 
So we moved them to the ICU. Um, the tertiary center was moving patients around to make a bed for this patient. And for the first 90 minutes, he did uh, fine. He was completely uh, doing okay. But then he started to deteriorate, uh, deteriorate very quickly. Uh, first, he started developing runs of non-sustained VT. Then his blood pressure started falling quickly, eventually requiring three vasopressors to maintain blood pressures in the 70s. I called the tertiary center and he was now uh, too sick to transport. He also now had subtle ST elevations back in the anterior leads and I had to take him back to the cath lab. So as I expected, the LED is now completely occluded. Uh, you can still see the, uh, the section with dye staining from the ostium uh, all the way down to the mid LED. And then the LED is completely shut down after that. And with the RCA CTO, he is getting no perfusion to his anterior or inferior wall at this point. And this was incredibly difficult to wire. Uh, I couldn't get through with a pro water or with a pilot 50 wire. I couldn't get through with a pilot 200 wire either, uh, even um, using a, a turnpike uh, microcatheter. I thought my wire was almost certainly uh, in the dissection plane. But the patient was crashing and, and I had to get the wire through. So I decided to try STAR or uh, subintimal tracking and reentry. The idea in STAR is that your wire is usually still fairly close to the surface in the subintimal space. So if you just keep pushing your wire forward down the vessel, eventually it will pop back into the true lumen. And that's fortunately what happened to us. I was able to star my wire down the LED and it probably went back into true lumen in the distal LED. You can see the long dissection in the mid LED here and maybe thrombus or more dissection in the distal LED. STAR is one of the first uh, dissection reentry CTO PCI techniques. Uh, it's not done very often anymore because of the long segments of dissection that it causes. It's now much more common to use uh, stingray balloons to reenter, but stingrays are expensive and were not available at our uh, community hospital. So other than bailout situation, STAR is sometimes still used as an, as an investment procedure in CTO PCI. In other words, leave the vessel dissected, don't stent it and come back later after it heals. But I, I couldn't leave this alone. This is not a case of CTO PCI and our patient was still unstable. Uh, so I started laying down stents and here's the first one. And thankfully it, it deployed just fine. Uh, no problem with uh, balloon rupture at this time. And the second long stent also went in uh, without a problem. So I eventually put in two 38 millimeter stents and did post dilation uh, with a, a 4.0 uh, NC balloon. And, and here is the final angiographic result. Uh, you can see the uh, subintimal section in the mid LED from the star technique where uh, all the branches are gone. Uh, the branches do come back more distally, probably where I re-entered, uh, but there is residual dissection or, or thrombus uh, visible as well. Uh, the patient made it to the tertiary center uh, where uh, they placed an impella. His echo showed an EF of 30% uh, with a severe anterior and apical uh, hypokinesis, uh, but he actually did reasonably well and went home uh, five days later. And about a year later, I, I found out that he was doing quite well, actually, and was actually training for a 5K. Uh, his EF uh, was uh, back to normal. All right, take home messages. Um, uh, there is nothing routine in this business. Um, any uh, routine humdrum case can turn sour in a second. Um, uh, we uh, reviewed uh, the uh, stent loss algorithm, and this is important to keep in mind. In our case, uh, we couldn't deploy, crush, or leave the stent alone in that left main, so we had to retreat it. And we discussed the uh, STAR technique from CTO-PCI uh, that can sometimes be used as a bailout in a dissection. Thank you for watching.